Welcome to Biblical Greek. In today's session, we're going to be discussing resources to help us study Greek better. So, what are some of the resources? To start out with, of course, remember, Learn to Read New Testament Greek by Dr. David Allen Black. Uh, he has been teaching for 40 plus years, a long time. A uh, good friend of mine, a mentor to me in many ways, and uh, uh, I give him credit for a lot of good that's happened in my life because he's been a blessing. But his book is used in seminaries and colleges all over and a good one to use. Of course, there's also uh, Elements of New Testament Greek by J.W. Uh, Wenham, and uh, this has been uh, updated by Jeremy Duff, uh, but um, uh, this is one I still turn to time to time, and um, uh, it's, it has some great examples uh, to help you look at the same paradigm a little differently or same grammatical category in a different way. This helps you with that. I have brought some of my books on Greek that have helped me through the years. Of course, uh, keep in mind uh, that you will need a Greek-English lexicon. This is the one that I have by Bauer Arden Gingrich Danker, B-A-G-D, 2000 edition. And uh, this is one that you need to have. Now, when we start the class, you may not need it right away, but in time, you will need this resource. Keep in mind, uh, you don't have to buy the hard copy. If you're uh, a person who travels or you love uh, to have your resources on Kindle or on your iPad, you can always go to places like Logos. Uh, that is, they have so much there that you can purchase as an add-on uh, or a bundle. And um, you can buy the same resource and you can check real quickly on your phone or on your iPad, your computer, PC, Mac, whatever. Then there's also Accordance. Accordance is very good. I have Accordance. And then there's also Olive Tree. It also has uh, these resources that you can download through their app. Uh, or actually, you have to purchase it on the website, and then you can get it downloaded onto your app. And then you have to sync. If you... Uh, download it on your back or your PC, then you have to make sure you sync it so that those same resources are now on your iPad, on your phone, whatever. So these are the three places that I usually go. There was also Bible Works, which uh, is not in business anymore. Uh, and maybe there will be more uh, online platforms where you can buy these resources, but this, these are the, some important major ones that will help you. Uh, then there's also... Uh, let's see, talking about the, uh, the Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament by uh, Lou and Nida. This is uh, based on semantic domains. No, you don't need to go out there and buy it unless you're doing advanced level um, Greek, studying Greek syntax, then definitely this work will be helpful to you. Of course, there are limitations. Of course, there are places where um, scholars disagree, but I've always found this to be helpful in uh, helping me understand the meaning behind uh, the words. And they're not based on just synchronic meanings, but also diachronic, because meanings are not always what they were originally. Okay, That's a etymological fallacy. So keep that in mind. The Greek-English lexicon of New Testament based on semantic domains helps you realize that even the words are not related, yet because of their semantic connection, they are. What else can we uh, discuss? Of course, there are so many other books that you could, I could recommend to you. Uh, there is uh, Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics by Daniel Wallace. And uh, Dr. Wallace is at Dallas Theological Seminary, and he has written this wonderful resource that has helped me through the years, and uh, it's still being used by students and scholars alike all over. Good one to have again. You don't need this for elementary Greek. This is more for second-year Greek students, but it's one that uh, can be beneficial. There's also... 
um, going deeper with, um, uh, uh, with New Testament Greek. This is an intermediate guide, uh, a study of the grammar and syntax of the New Testament by Kostenberger, Merkel, and Plummer. Uh, Dr. Kostenberger now is at uh, Mid, Mid-America, or Midwestern, I believe, and uh, Dr. Merkel is at Southeastern, and Dr. Plummer is at Southern Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. But again, this is a little advanced level uh, Greek grammar. Of course, there are others here, like J.H. Moulton's uh, Grammar of New Testament Greek, heavy stuff. And also, in some ways, uh, they are dated because of the way they treat the verb. Uh, there's, there's so much that has advanced since that time uh, regarding aspect. And we're going to talk about that when we get to verbs. And uh, that's further down the line. But for now, just be aware of that resource. And then there's Fundamentals of New Testament Greek by Porter, Reed, and O'Donnell. And this is also one that I have found helpful. Uh, And um, the best part is, especially if you really are serious about studying Greek, uh, these different texts help you see vocabulary and examples in a different way. And so it reinforces what you're studying in this text. So that's where I found this very helpful. Uh, There's also, talking about, Uh, elementary and advanced Greek. This is one that just came out, and I just purchased it, so I can't really say that this is a great resource because I found it useful, but it is one that is being recommended more and more every day. It's called Ancient Greek Grammar for the Study of the New Testament by Heinrich von uh, Sibenthal, and uh, Dr. Sibenthal has been a professor in Europe, in many, in several different universities, and it is quite in depth and uh, has so many examples. So this is one that I I am looking forward to studying and uh, going over in my spare time. So that's that's that. Uh, let's see what else can we talk about. We can definitely talk about the linguistics for New Testament Greek. Again, this is a book by Dr. David Allen Black, and it just kind of lays out morphology. It lays out uh, uh, phonology, and these are not essential for us in an elementary course, but if you want to go deeper, then these are books that you may want to consider. This is the second edition, a survey of basic concepts and applications by Dr. David Allen Black. Uh, What else do we have? I uh, do want to talk about this one. This also just came out, in fact, in 2020, and I have read portions of it. It's called Reading and Pronouncing Biblical Greek, Historical Pronunciation versus Erasmian. This is the book that helped me a lot in the past few weeks uh, by Falimun Zakari. And um, this book was recommended by Con Campbell, uh, who is a Greek scholar. Uh, who has done a lot of work in the field, and uh, I'll talk about him in just a few moments. But this is one book that I'm still working through, but a good resource to have uh, reading and and pronouncing biblical Greek. Uh, Let's moving on. If you want to really tackle advanced Greek grammar and even... And now this is where we get into the different approaches to Greek, New Testament Greek. This is called Discourse Grammar of the Greek New Testament. Uh, There is the Halidean approach, and then there is the Levinson, Rungi approach. This is that one. Um, If you're going to study advanced biblical Greek, then you'll probably end up working with um, these two texts, uh, Dr. uh, Wallace's Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics and Discourse Grammar of the Greek New Testament because in some ways um, uh, uh, Dr. Rungi's book goes 
uh, and covers areas where Dr. Wallace's book doesn't go. So very good resource to have only if you're going to do advanced, advanced level work in Greek. Uh, for vocabulary purposes, uh, I do want to mention uh, this resource by Moulton and Milligan called the Vocabulary of the Greek New Testament. Uh, again, a very good resource to have uh, supplementing the Greek lexicon, which is uh, by Bauer, Arndt, Gingrich, and Danker. Now, I'm going to give, <laughs> share with you this resource, which is sort of a, a tool that helps you cheat, but hopefully you won't use it for that purpose, and that is the analytical lexicon to the Greek New Testament. What does this do? Every single word has been completely parsed in this work. So if you ever come across a word and you go, I have no idea, go to this analytical Greek lexicon, and if you know how to look up the word, you'll find the correct parsing. Um, now, nowadays, in many of the electronic resources, all you have to do is move the cursor over the word, and it'll parse it for you. But this is also a very good resource. But let it be the last resource that you turn to rather than the first one uh, that you go to when you're studying your for your homework or your assignments. This is also a good one to have the complete vocabulary guide to the Greek New Testament by Trench Card uh, or Trench uh, uh, Tren, uh, Trenchard. Um, all the words are listed uh, based on their frequency, and um, I've looked at this and studied this a lot through the years. And cognate word groups are given. And um, you, you can't go wrong with having this on your shelf. Uh, of course, I want to make mention about two or three more. One is the development of Greek and the New Testament uh, by Chris Karagunis. He is a tremendous scholar, and um, he has written everything and more you would ever want to know about the development of the Greek language and how do we get to where we are today you want to know, this is the work for you. Uh, I have read a lot of portions of this book, but not every single chapter. I turn to it as I see a need to understand a certain concept or a topic. Very helpful. Finally, two uh, resources I want to mention to you. One is, this is very advanced level, and yet in some places, uh, scholars have said that this is kind of a weak work. Uh, this is by um, uh, Blas de Bruner Funk, called A Greek Grammar of the New Testament and Other Early Christian Literature. It doesn't seem to be very big, but uh, boy, it's, every sentence is, uh, is important. And um, I have really benefited from this. But again, in some places, it is dated, in my opinion. And I have talked about this in our resources section of the syllabus, A.T. Robertson's The Grammar of the Greek New Testament in the Light of Historical Research, a book that was finally, um, in the final edition was in 1930, I believe, um, 34. So much information. I mean, this scholar uh, was so prolific, so prodigious in writing so much. Uh, the, the only weakness or two weaknesses I find is uh, some of the scholarship is dated because the Greek language study has advanced. And second issue is sometimes A.T. Robertson will talk about an example or a reference here under a heading and then he will go to another chapter and talk about the same example under a different heading and they are contradictory. And so maybe his uh, understanding grew through the years, maybe, uh, but uh, there are some contradictory examples we need to be careful about. So that's one that I do want to mention. And then if you just want to get a good survey of where is Greek language today, what is happening 
Uh, this may be a little overwhelming if you're just starting out. But if you have some background uh, to the study of New Testament Greek or Koine Greek, then this is a good one by Con Campbell or Constantine Campbell, Advances in the Study of Greek with New Insights for Reading the New Testament. Uh, the chapter headings are A Short History of Greek Studies. How, where are we today? And that's how I can say what I said about A.T. Robertson. Uh, or Blaster Brunner Funk, Funk, why do I believe that? We're, or J.H. Moulton, what has changed? Some things have changed. Uh, linguistic theories, um, discourse analysis from the Hallidayan approach versus uh, Levinson and Rungi's approach, as I mentioned to you. Pronunciation, uh, verbal aspect, uh, deponency, and middle voice. We'll cover kind of... Uh, a very surface level of some of these issues when we get to the voice or when we get to verb, but here you get so much. Uh, but again, this is an advanced level work for students who desire to go much further than just first year Greek. So hopefully this brief survey helps you understand some of the resources out there. There's so much out there, so much available, uh, plus on electronic platform, online platform, you can download bundles and uh, add-ons that can make your life so much easier in studying Greek. Bottom line is this, use these resources to help uh, you in your study of the language. Don't let these resources become a crutch. Uh, still memorize the vocabulary, still memorize the paradigms, still take the time to understand those grammatical categories, still parse, still try to uh, dig into uh, that sentence and figuring out what part of speech is it, instead of quickly running to one of these resources and um, losing out. So use them to supplement rather than to cheat. And that's our session on resources for the study of New Testament Greek.